Hi, so a few days ago, I asked people to ask me some questions and see if I could answer them or at least give some kind of opinion on them. So I got two really thoughtful questions on YouTube and a bunch more on Facebook, but we'll start with the YouTube uh, because we are on YouTube. So the first question was, do you know about David Pierce, Pierce's version of transhumanism? And if so, what are your thoughts on it? If not, then I would highly recommend it. So uh, I w I'm very familiar with transhumanism, but I was not familiar with David Pierce. Uh, I went ahead and watched some of his videos. Essentially, uh, what I gathered from him, uh, his idea is just to promote the well-being of all conscious creatures. So the technology that we develop should be used for the benefit of all life on the planet and to minimize suffering and to maximize all happiness. And what I think about it, I'm that is absolutely my way of uh, looking at it. I think people's imaginations are limited because of where we are right now with our technology. So people have a hard time imagining what the, what it would even look like eliminating all suffering on the planet. But I think that definitely should be the goal. If we do anything with our technology since the first invention of whatever tool we made, it was always to lessen human suffering or at least to make human lives easier in some way so we could farm food better or hunt animals better or house shelter or whatever and then it developed to where we are right now where every piece of technology we have is to make human life easier supposedly but we are at a really complicated time in the sense that it's almost like our global consciousness has not yet caught up uh, to the reality of the technology that we have available we could end world hunger, we could end poverty, uh, we could end wealth inequality, we could end racial inequality and all that stuff. Um, world could be just so much better uh, if we actually wanted it. That's one of the absurd parts uh, to me about being alive is being put in, dropped into this human civilization as a baby, having no say in how it's run and just kind of have to live with the choices and decisions of people who we have we don't know personally. This is what happens when we grow from tribes of just maybe tens of people or a few hundred people at most to cities of millions of people. Uh, things naturally get really complicated. But what I started talking about was that we do live just in this strange time and I think this time currently that we are in in this phase where things seem to be chaotic and we seem to have so many different opinions and so many different ideas on what's the right way for humankind to go forward. But this is just a short amount of time. Once we get sufficiently advanced with our technology, uh, we can eliminate poverty, we can eliminate scarcity. And then it's the interesting choices that we have to make. We as human beings, we can talk with one another. So when we have a technology, that will remove your mental illnesses and your physical illnesses. I think that should be done if people are happy with it. Uh, I would be very happy if I was uh, offered an option to remove my mental illnesses and my physical illnesses. Uh, that's the dream that I would look forward to one day, uh, hopefully in the next few decades if everything goes well. But where does it stop? I, worked with, I work with a disabled kid who cannot communicate beyond just a few words. What are the morals and ethics of how we change this kind of human being's life when they can't even say what they actually want? And then when humankind is happy and flourishing, what do we do about all of the other creatures on planet Earth? I think the first logical step would be that of course we stop factory farming and all this nonsense that is going on and give them the best life possible and maybe at first just stay away from them. But if you truly want to eliminate all suffering and we look at life in nature, then most animals, at least herbivores, have really violent deaths, accidents, disease. That's the reality of living in nature. People, a lot of people have this idea of animals just being in harmony with nature and everything is beautiful. No, uh, life in nature is actually quite tough 
And if we do want to eliminate our suffering, then we have to think about what do we do with animals. Is it ethical for us to uplift animals, starting with maybe the great apes or dolphins, to give them some kind of brain implantations to make them more intelligent? But maybe that's not what they want. Who is to say that we should do that? Maybe the best thing is to just stay away uh, and let them do their own thing. But then they're still suffering. So how do we eliminate our suffering? And then there's the question, is that really our responsibility? Well, if we have the power to eliminate our suffering, and if we think of ourselves as good beings, then yes, uh, I would say that would be our responsibility to eliminate our suffering. But it's complicated, difficult questions. Also, when it's possible for you uh, to make people healthy, Uh, in their minds and in their bodies, someone has cancer, dying of cancer, and maybe they have a few months left to live, and then you cure that person, and then they're well and good, and they're eternally grateful for the medicine and all of that. But what about the people who are minutes away from death? You would say, of course, save those people minutes away from death. But what about the unlucky, unfortunate soul who just died a minute ago after this technology has been, you know, widespreadly available. What do we do with that person who has been dead for a minute? Do we resurrect them? Definitely, most likely, the loved ones of that deceased person, they would say, yes, bring them back. It's only been a minute. Come on. But then we get into a strange territory. What about people who have been dead for an hour? you could still argue and and it wouldn't get into too grotesque territory or just some bizarre Frankenstein stuff that yes, an hour would be fine. What about a day, a week or a month? You know, uh, how far back could you go and how far back should you go? It is possible that some moral and ethical questions uh, can never be answered objectively since morals and ethics in the first place are not objective. They're not There are no physical laws of morality and ethics that we could look to and study and find out some equations. This is the right thing to do. That does not exist. No matter how advanced and evolved we get, it will always be subjective, depending on how we evolved and what our instincts are and what we regard as good and bad. It can never be an objective science of what's the right thing to do. So I think that's interesting. And I think a point will come when instead of just an interesting thought experiment, these are real questions that need answers. Uh, What do we do? I think that we will decide as a collective humanity, we will decide all together what the right thing is. And uh, I think at first, at least, we will stay true uh, to our instincts and what we currently think is ethical and good to do. But I'm sure once we get brain augmentations and we get smarter, I'm sure that then our views on ethics and morality and what it means to be human uh, will also deeply change. The same way that we look back in the Middle Ages, people used to look at the world and people in very different way than what they look at the world like uh, today, we as people. In the same way we in the future will look at today from a really different point of view than we can imagine today. So our morals and ethics always evolve and they will change uh, a lot in the future. And I think the point being that, you know, that is natural and normal and it should be that way. I think it's a fallacy to think that we are the final perfect creation of evolution. Uh, I'm always fascinated to think about like million years from now, if even if we had no technology, a million years from now, if we still had biological evolution going on and pressures to push us creatures to be more intelligent, I wonder what the limits of intelligence are if we are just naturally pushed uh, towards being even more intelligent than what we are now. I have no doubt that we are not the final perfect creatures who are the smart as we can be. Uh, there's a long way to go to even being more intelligent. And it's fascinating for me to think what that outcome might look like. I think definitely we have stopped biological evolution to the point where it's almost uh, inconsequential. We will be able to select, even the, with the technology today, we are able to select you know, our kids to not have certain diseases. And even to go a bit farther from that, you can choose kids who are more likely to be more intelligent or more likely to not have physical illnesses, mental illnesses. And when we have these technologies, uh, hopefully soon, uh, then all of that will change profoundly. So. 
Uh, transhumanism is a fascinating, interesting topic, and I wouldn't call myself a transhumanist, but I think the ideas of transhumanism is just a natural byproduct of uh, thinking and wishes of a creature of a human being who is alive today and who wishes to be better and who thinks that human beings could be better, uh, that what being alive can be much better. And then that is tran transhumanism, then you're transhumanist. I never defined it, but yes, transhumanism, basically it's what it is, that we can be better, the state of being alive as a human can be much better. And if we have the means by technology to do that, then we should use all the technology we can to make being alive better. Uh, feel better this is my my response to that so uh, absolutely agree uh, with david pierce uh, that that should be our goal uh, and right now we're just living in these crazy times i think it's totally normal for a species that's just technologically just gaining access to better technologies that we have this chaos and weird stuff going on uh, I predict uh, it has lasted for a few centuries, depending on how fast we get to artificial intelligence, that's general or super intelligent, uh, really quickly this will change and this weird phase of humanity uh, will end. So uh, next question, I don't think I'll get to Facebook questions, but, but these are good questions. Uh, next question was, do you believe in any inherent arc or tendency in the universe towards a certain goal for conscious life and what part does conflict play in this arc i think that is an absolutely fascinating question and some few years ago i would have said you know i would have disregarded it as that's just you know being egocentrical and and thinking that human beings and conscious life is like the most marvelous thing in the universe after all look at how insignificant we are we are dots in a vast vast universe uh, so in terms of scale, we are nothing. But another interesting point of view is, I also explained or just elaborated in another video of what I thought, is that the thing that we would have in, in, in common with any and all alien life that is advanced technologically, the thing we would all have in common would be conscious experience. And like, like that's a really interesting point, I think, and I think this is true, that no matter how far you go in the universe, any advanced alien civilization, we would have something in common with them, and that would be our conscious experience. And, and to me, when I, I always kind of thought that, but to actually put it into words and to understand that my mind was blown that one universal thing in our universe that comes with intelligence, almost necessarily, we can take debate on that, uh, what would be consciousness. And, and that is fascinating to me to think about. So I, I wouldn't, I mean, it's possible that we live in a simulation, but then that's another, another story that it's just created with consciousness in mind. But it's also possible that consciousness is something way more fundamental than we think. Uh, I don't know if I agree with the idea that every piece of matter is conscious, has some degree of consciousness. So even an electron has some degree of consciousness. There's nothing what it feels like to really be an el electron maybe, but maybe there's a fraction of a fraction of some kind of experience in that. And then people claim that, you know, if you put atoms, molecules together in the right way, boom, then you have expanded consciousness in, in the way that we have. So I think that's a really interesting thing to think about. I'm not sure if there's some kind of a tendency in the universe. If we look around in the universe, it's really random and chaotic. And I made quite a few videos about how it could have been much more different. And, and I do take seriously the idea of multiverses. So for our universe, we are just so lucky to be here. Just chance and coincidence for every one of our universe where conscious life is possible, there are billions and billions and billions of universes where they're just particle soup or nothing happens uh, and consciousness is impossible. But it might be possible that there is some special configuration in our universe that allows consciousness to arise. And I think that might be possible but I'm unsure as to is there any driving factor 
towards consciousness. There might be something when evolution takes hold and, and life starts evolving, that there might be some push in some way for it to eventually get to consciousness, but I don't see that as clear or obvious either. So, so to answer that, I, I don't think that there's a push, but I think it's a really interesting question to think about. And if not exactly, yes, then I think that there is something deeper to that question. First of all, that any life in the universe that would be intelligent would have the same feeling of being self-aware and conscious. If you ever had a spiritual experience or psychedelic experience, if you ever had these moments in meditation when you are just present of being aware in the moment, that that feeling would be universal across any aliens as well, that is mind-blowing and that is the part of the puzzle that makes me think that there might be something to it. Um, thinking that there is some link or that is something deeper and more fundamental about consciousness. That's what I think. Maybe I missed some part of the question. I'm not sure. So yeah, I don't think there's an inherent push necessarily towards consciousness. Uh, I do think it's a really curious and strange effect that does happen because, you know, it's the question like, why do we have consciousness at all? So that is again one of the things that makes me wonder how weird and bizarre and wonderful our universe is. And, and the mysteries are real, no matter what the answers are. Uh, it's just so strange being a conscious creature. And the more we learn about the world, the more magical it does become. Uh, using that word in a genuine sense of, of something being wonderful or full of wonder and mysterious. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a trip. It's a trip to find out about the universe. So I won't get to any more questions in this video, but we did well. Brilliant questions. So thank you very much for the questions. It was a joy uh, talking about them and I hope it was interesting hearing the response uh, as well. So thanks. If you have any more thoughts, then please share them in the comments. And of course, Thank you so much for watching and take care.